To the AM show, time now for the news. Now, Professor of Educational Leadership at the University of Cape Coast, George Katie Udru, is asking the Ministry of Education to, as a matter of agency, review the free senior high school policy. He says free senior high school, which remains one of government's flagship programs, is currently saddled with a number of challenges, including funding, equity in access, and other concerns. Professor George Ojo disclosed this at the 40th anniversary of Creator Schools in Tema. There is more in this following report. The Creator Schools has contributed its quota to the country development through the students it has churned out. At a debut to climax the 40th anniversary celebration, the school displayed some aspects of Ghanaian culture through dance performances, its 40 year journey with recitations, choreography, but to mention a few. Guest speaker at the event, Professor George K. T. Udru, who is a professor of educational leadership at the University of Cape Coast, believes as a way of ensuring quality education, there is the need to review the free SHS policy. He explains, reviewing it will look at funding, equity, among other issues. Review simply means evaluating processes to see what is working, so you strengthen that, what is not working, so that you find ways of correcting the wrongs. That is review. And so I urge the Ministry of Education to think critically about a call for stakeholder engagement to look at the free NSHS and so that we can put in place strategies that will make the free SHS more beneficial to those who need it more beneficial to the disadvantaged people. Unless as a nation we put in measures to bridge the gap between the disadvantage and the advantage, the rural and urban will not be improving. Our educational system will continue to suffer. Let's put away politics and look at education from education. Professor George Udru says the focus on passing exams rather than the quality education is worrying. Making the curriculum relevant getting the necessary things that will help teachers to deliver, getting the necessary things that will help learners to learn well, all those things are inputs that, uh, I mean, uh, work towards quality. Uh, if we pride ourselves with only examination results, at the end of the day, they, they will come out with first classes and all those things, but they get to the factories and they cannot work. They get to the hospitals and they cannot work, people will be dying. They get to the banks and even simple accounting becomes useless. So that is why we need to take quality issues very serious. And I always advocate that we must aim at act, uh, quality indexed access expansion underpinned by equity. And that is what we need. Meanwhile, Director of Creator Schools, Evelyn Jamper Markin, says despite the challenges of running a private institution, Creator Schools is adopting new ways of producing students who will benefit from holistic education. She was unhappy as some parents have less time for the academic needs of their wards. Comparing 20 years in the early days of Creator and 20 years down the line, there's so much difference with the type of learners we encounter in our classrooms. But teachers do receive in-service training as modern ways to give off their best. So it's helping, though difficult that we are managing. 100% in agreement with what the guest speaker said. It's like, if your school is not performing, then you are not doing well. But that shouldn't be. Parents in the Chingbulibu in the northeast Gonja district of the Savannah region want authorities to enforce rules to stem absenteeism in the public schools. They say this is hampering the academic growth of their wards. Martina Bugri reports. Absenteeism is very common in most schools in northern Ghana. And one such school is the Changbulugu DA Primary School. The children spend just two hours on Friday in school. They say is the key to unlocking potentials in communities. But can that be said about the Changbulugu DA Primary School? It is 11 o'clock and they are closed for the day. These students are expected to write the final exam with their colleagues in big cities. Will education unlock a potential in this community? We get to speak to some of the students to understand what is happening. Hello. Hi. How are you? 
Why? No school today. Yes. Is it that you came and there's no school or you didn't come at all? You can't ask you to go. Yes, I can. Kabolena. At this point, I had to switch to the local dialect to speak to Suleiman Mubarak. And he says only one teacher was in school today but has left. I came to school at 7.30 and closed at 11. Our madam came, but she taught only one class and said we should go home. But we are still here. Mohammed Ayuba, a member of the community, said he was also shocked when the kids said they had closed at 11 o'clock. So they come home early. So I, I contacted them and asked them, and they said them, their masses are not in school today. It's only one madam who came, and she also left. That's why they are going home. A parent, Adam Mahamadu, said he had inquired from the teachers if Friday has been added to the rest days for schools, but he was not given response. That is the situation. The Friday absenteeism is an issue. I asked the head teacher, I know it's Saturday and Sundays that are for rest. Have they added Friday too? But he didn't give me a response. Truth be told, the teachers do not come every day. Some come whilst others don't come at all. You will see one today, and the next time, it's a different teacher. The head of supervision at the Education Directorate of the Northeast Gonja District, Idris Suzakaria, said the teachers had earlier been cautioned on the issue of absenteeism. Later your call team, we called the school improvement officer for the area. Then he was as shocked as anything was per his explanation on Wednesday. He met with his head teacher and his staff on this same issue. And per his explanation, they all agree they were faulty, and for that matter, they will not do that again. So when your call came and we also called him, he was shocked that after meeting them just two days ago. They still went ahead and behaved the same way. The reason for why he has met them. So we told him to query them and then let them respond to the query letters by Mindy to this directory as to why this marriage action or sanction should not be taken. Now, Interior Minister Ambrose Derry is optimistic electorate in Nandom will choose the governing new patriotic party because it has performed better than the opposition National Democratic Congress. He spoke after he was retained through popular acclamation at Nandom. Rafik Salam reports. Interior Minister Ambrose Derry was a lone horse in the new patriotic party MPP, Nandom Constituency Parliamentary Primary. His selfless approach developing the constituency and the people are clear for the 420 delegates and the maids of supporters crammed at the London St. Teresa Paris Hall. The reason why he is cool, calm and collected and not going through the frustration, sleepless nights, disloyalty and above all uncertainty that aspirants elsewhere are being subjected to in their party's primaries. The boss has his affectionately called by his supporters for years to come will still remain a dominant force in the politics of Dundum and the region at large. The delegates were eager and in hurry to acclaim the member of parliament that has changed the complexion of politics in the area and better their lives. And when the question was thrown by the Nundum electoral officer as the Akoto Dako they did not disappoint him. Ambrose Derry, in accepting to be the MPP parliamentary candidate for the 2024 polls, paid growing tribute to the Catholic Church 
led by the late Cardinal Poroku Derry and all past parliamentarians of the area recognizing the good works they did which impacted positively on the lives of the people. He then moved on, generating a debate between the MPP and the NDC as to which of them performed better for the people of London and ended sticking his neck out for the MPP. What we are going to do in the, in the campaign coming is to ask our people to choose between the MPP and the NDC, who has developed more. And therefore, I ask my people, who develop more? It's obvious that the road network is known. Highway, we pulled it through us to Hamelin. We have dropped it. We are going through Brutu, going to Domwini. Urban roads, we have done Nandom roads, still ongoing as I talk to you. The next one we are going to do is Brutu to Danko. We'll be doing the road in the hospital. And we'll be doing next one to Kole. The EU roads have done a lot of work. Water, we are in all the communities, we're still counting. Electricity, we pulled it more than any other group. The NDC cannot challenge us with that. Employment, we have employed more people than the NDC has ever employed. He pledged with the support of the party to work to increase the party's parliamentary and presidential votes in the 2024 polls. In 2016, I won over my brother of the NDC by 800 votes. In 2020, thanks to their work and support of Nandome, we raised it to over 4,000 votes. The president who used to have a gap between he and the NDC, about 12,000. The last time, he was beaten by just 1,000 votes. But there's something I need to comment in for. While my votes increased by over 4,000, his votes also increased over 4,000, but his votes increased by 31 votes more than my votes. So it meant that Nandom is moving in the right direction. Today, I'm telling them, you want me, you want me with Baumia? They said yes. We need to move forward with Baumia as a flag bearer. And I'm telling them, are they ready? For us to increase the gap? Yeah. Are you ready for us to integrate the gap? Yeah. So we are going to increase the gap. And we will emerge with Dr. Elijah Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as president. And my humble self, Ambrosieri, as MP Fernando. In neighboring Lamuse constituency, Dr. Bright Baligi was also retained as the party's parliamentary candidate for the 2024 general elections. It wouldn't serve our collective interest should I win as a member of parliament, whilst even if the flag bearer wins as the president, we lose the presidential votes here. I commit to the project, and I want to state that the work starts now, and it starts with you. We have provided you with all it takes. All the arsenals are at your disposal, at your community levels, for you to charge the voters to go out there and endorse Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as the president. There was, however, a win for Deputy Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Amiri Tine Isaku, in a contest dubbed Uncle and Nephew Contest in the Social East constituency. Amiri Tine won a landslide victory against his maternal uncle and political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, Dr. Josoje Puntier Zato. Every person who loves the MPP must not see this election as an election of Amidu and Jabunti. It's an election of the MPP, and the MPP is the winner. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament for New Jabin South, Michael Ochubefi, says the unprecedented developmental project in the constituency puts the NPP in a poor position to break the eight. Here's Michael, uh, Maxwell Kudekos report. Speaking... After a ceremony to acclaim him as the new Patriotic Party parliamentary candidate for the new Jordan South constituency, Mr. Michael Ochibefi expressed optimism of fulfilling about 70% of his promises to the people of new Jordan South. He explained that the level of infrastructure development spanning from town and community routes 
sports infrastructure, including the Koforidua Youth Resources Center, AstroTEFs, job creation, informal sector support, among others, will deliver results for the new patriotic party in the constituency. He says politics and governance is about improving the lives of citizens. According to Mr. Michael Ochebefi, the new patriotic party government has tremendously improved the lives of many citizens in the new Jwabin South constituency. He has been speaking with Maswa Kudeko. In all the spheres of uh, endeavors, I mean, when you, when you come to education, I've done exceptionally well. For me, I think that with regards to education infrastructure, uh, teaching and learning aids, I mean, motivation for students and teachers, <laughs> and um, above all, I mean, trying to encourage students through uh, vacation classes. Uh, we have done a lot in that area. We have also contributed a lot in the area of healthcare, in the area of sanitation. I mean, we have done so well. I mean, and fiscal infrastructure too. We have done well. Roads, exceptionally well. In sports and recreation, we have done so well. And in, in the area of uh, career development and, and scholarships, we have done well. We have also helped to improve the life of people in the informal sector. We know what we are going to do. We are going, we're going to go all out. You know me. When it comes to campaigning, <laughs> I, am, I, I believe that I'm a colossus in that area. And I will do my possible best to make sure that I get the people in the municipality to love our party, the MPP, to understand what we stand for so that they can vote for us to be, break the eight. And I can assure the whole country that New Jersey South's contribution will be so enormous. He was quick to add that the party's electoral fortunes will largely depend on unity. Accordingly, he has started a move to bring on board all aggrieved parties within the constituency under a unity of purpose. I relent on my effort at all, when on my oaths. I have said it countless times that we cannot do it alone. We have to do it with everybody. I mean, those who supported us and those who didn't support us. In politics, you have people who may have different orientation or mindset about what you believe. That doesn't be mean that those people are your enemies. But somehow, if you accept it to be the norm, that will happen. But I can assure you that I'm going to start work seriously. This morning, I visited a very important person in the municipality to engage the person who wanted to contest me earlier on, to engage the person so that we can have a, com a conversation. I mean, people may not know what we have done so far. I've sent two different uh, delegations to see them. I mean, all paid, it has not been successful, but we believe that won't stop. If I stop, it means that they will have their way. But if I don't stop, we'll achieve results. Maswa Kudeko reports for Joy News. Still on your election headquarters, Member of Parliament for Huawei, John Peter Mewu, has assured that every part of the constituency will receive an equal share of physical and human capacity development during his second term. He's employing constituents to endorse his second bid to ensure he delivers on his development agenda for the constituency. He was speaking during his acclamation ceremony at B Atabu in the Hohoi over the weekend. Both the young and old gathered at the B Atabu Roman Catholic Church Park to witness yet another historic event in the Hohoi constituency in the Volta region. The governing New Patriotic Party acclaimed John Peter Amewu as its parliamentary candidate with high hopes of maintaining the only seat for the party in the region. The party hierarchy is optimistic Mr. Amewu would lead the NPP to increase its electoral fortunes in the upcoming December general elections. Party executives and government appointees took turns to canvass for votes for the NPP, which aims to break the eight years power genius. John Peter Amewu assured of spreading development in every nook and cranny of the constituency during his second term.
the voter regional chairman of the NPP, Makafi Kofiwanya, indicated that his party is development-oriented, hence must be maintained to continue its good works. Politics is all about development. Politics is all about growth. Politics is about empowering the individual to be self-sustaining. We believe that after learning and going through an apprenticeship, you come out and have your own kiosk and have your own dryer and set up your own business. That is what we believe. We are sure that exactly that is what Honorable Meru is doing. In one way. So let's keep the fire burning. Don't be distracted by any naysayer. Those who are wishing that this country will collapse so that they can leverage on that and come to power, they will never come to power. We are going to break the eight. We are going to break the eight. With Dr. With Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and Honorable John Peter Mahu, we will break the eight and retain the seat. Quarters. Now to other news stories, economic activities in Saikopa in the North Tongu district have ground to a standstill four days after the collapse of the Akpakpala River Bridge. The bridge broke when a heavily laden truck carrying loads of salt attempted to traverse the bridge, leading to its structural failure. The bridge, a vital lifeline for the local community, connected Saikopa to neighboring areas like Adidome and Guapong and facilitated the transportation of goods and people. Ivy Setoji visited the community and has come through with this report. Sai Copper uh, in the North Tong district, and behind me is the Aklakpa River. And five days ago, the bridge collapsed, uh, making uh, activities, especially business activities, uh, come to a standstill. Now, uh, most of the residents, uh, travelers, and motorists uh, have to park at the other side, take a boat uh, to wherever they are going. This actually leads to drop up from Adidas. What the residents are asking government to do is uh, for an immediate action to be taken uh, as soon as possible to get the bridge fixed. One of the residents we spoke to earlier said that maybe it was a way uh, of a way God is maybe God is just showing the government uh, something or a way uh, to to make the government wake up to do something about the bridge because it has been in a bad shape for some time now. So the residents are asking government to urgently do something about this uh, breach, fix it immediately. Because as you can see at the back, uh, the, the track is still in the water. Uh, the owners are trying their best to fix it. Uh, residents, travelers, and motorists, including Okada riders, have been speaking with Joy News. The government should at least help us as quickly as possible because especially the children, imagine the children crossing it, it's, it's, it's not a nice experience at all. I, honestly, I didn't think I would miss this on the way for um, the fact it's not my first time when it came, so I wasn't really scared about it, but I don't, the, the bridge there hasn't been negotiated for a long time, so I think this is just, since we like action, this is just the best action we can take for prompt um, uh, care to be taken. Naturally seeing this horrified situation is, is a little bit tough for me, and today too is the first time I'm crossing river, this kind of river with a canoe, and I think all these things couldn't have happened if maybe structural tests should be done, should, should be doing about this thing. I think this shouldn't have happened. And then moreover, too, the government should just speed up and then fix it up so that people can access the road. I need to fear what I let. So when I was on the canoe, I was seriously afraid. Maybe somebody can fall into this water and lose it or her life. So I pleaded the government of Ghana to do something about the bridge. That will help the people, not only the people, but everybody. Bridge, I'm complaining to you, guys. Still, can we keep the bridge up to over for now? I'm a manu. After all, ten bridge, I'm going to get me like block. We can't be doing that. I'm going to. I'm going to do my my job. If you're going to screw your hand, we'll have to come. 
school your football, and then you'll be all a quickly never win any better. I'll be school your squeaker Monday here up to now. Now the Dura Covagi, and when you told you, you call a tortuous girl over the yard, you won't tell the family. We are hoping the government does something about the situation as early as possible. My name is Ivy Satoji for Joy News. On that note, we end the AM news for this morning. Up next is News Review. Dr. Rashid Kwesi Etwafo, who is the NPP parliamentary candidate for Ejumaku Enyani Siam, will be our guest joining Benjamin Akaku for the News Review. We'll be back shortly.